everybody, Ryan Jackson. I hope you're having a great day. Welcome back to the 100 days of the 2023 National Electrical Code Changes series. We're going to do one more video on Article 680. This one is particular to fountains. So 680.54 is the topic here. Grounding and bonding. The requirements for equipotential bonding of splash pads were clarified. I think this is a really good change. So here we've got our splash pad. Now, until the 2020 code, we didn't even recognize splash pads. We didn't talk about them. So the hazard associated with a splash pad is certainly not the same hazard that you would have with a swimming pool. You know, again, our, our resistance to electric shock is our skin, and the more wet your skin is, the less resistance you have. However, there's a big difference in walking on a fountain and getting your skin somewhat, somewhat wet versus being in a swimming pool completely immersed in water. So for years, we didn't really consider splash pads to be that dangerous. But while they're not as dangerous as a swimming pool, they're certainly more of an electrical hazard than walking down the sidewalk. I mean, come on, you've got an electric pump squirting water up and you're walking around in it. Don't tell me that there's no hazard. There, there has to be a hazard here. So in the 2020 code, we finally recognize splash pads. Now, we classify them as fountains, and by definition, they are. They shoot water up into the air, so it's a fountain. What's the requirements when it comes to bonding around a fountain? Well, we, we already talked about the perimeter surfaces in 680.26 for swimming pools. We said, you know, you bond the pool shell itself, and then you go out three feet, and you bond the perimeter surface. Well, if you don't have a pool, and all you have is a flat surface like a splash pad, What's the shell and what's the perimeter? Where does the perimeter start and where does it end? So that's what we tried to clarify. So for the purposes of 680.26, the shell of a splash pad is the area where pedestrians traverse it. And the boundary of this area, the perimeter surface, is considered the inside wall for perimeter surfaces. All right, so wherever the people walk through it, that's the shell, go out three feet, that's the perimeter surface. Bond all of that stuff together. Uh, probably going to have rebar in the concrete. And then bond that to the motor or, you know, anything that's electrical uh, within five feet of the area. And you're good to be go. And you're, <laughs> you're good to be go. And you will be good to go. All right. There you go. I uh, mangled that last sentence there, but hopefully you get the gist of it. I'm sure you will. We're done with swimming pools, fortunately. We're going to change gears and talk about fire pumps in the next video, and I hope you'll join me then. Thanks, everybody.